I didn't want to make a video right now because my teeth kind of look bad. My roommates are sleeping and my makeup obviously doesn't look as well as it could, but that's that. And I figured I may want to talk about this while I'm talking about it to a friend anyway. But I've been in, I'm not even making this up, two relationships. My dad and both of his living siblings have divorced and or remarried. The only one of my dad's siblings who is not remarried is his sister who's currently going through a divorce as far as I have last heard. My dad remarried and my uncle remarried and I don't know what would have become of his sibling who didn't make it past the prenatal stages but that's another discussion. Who knows? I'm thinking that my uncle or aunt, whatever he or she may have been, was spared from all that pain that our families really had to go through. But that's another discussion. And literally, the only the only two siblings in my mom's family who have not remarried or divorced or anything like that are two of my mom's brothers. And so I've lived to, even on my mom's side, I saw one of her sisters divorce and one of her brothers divorce. And... I was alive for that same sister's other divorce, but I don't remember it. But I can tell you, I mean, just for, just for the divorces I've seen alone, just for a heartbreak that I've seen alone, and for the heartbreak that I've had alone. And my grandma, this is how messed up our family is. I think it was New Year's 1952 or 1953, grandma had said that when she and Papa were dating, Great Grandma Gatiss wouldn't let her go out to a New Year's Eve party because that would be breaking curfew. And her exact words were something along the lines of, and he took someone else. And then she laughed about him. And I'm like, how can you laugh about that? So I've seen it. I, I, I mean, I didn't say that to her at the time, but I've just seen enough heartbreak. I've had enough heartbreak. And not to mention... I talked about some of the divorces that I wasn't alive for, obviously, and so I was alive for, let's see, one, two, three, so my dad and his living siblings divorces, let's see, so that's one, two, three, four, five, so I've been alive for five divorces, actually six, although I don't remember the one, because I was too young when it happened. And so I've seen six divorces in my family. There were others that, although I don't remember the one, like I said, because I was too young. And then, literally, so my dad and all his living siblings are divorced. Only two of my mom's brothers have not been divorced and or remarried. And... Let's see, I'm trying to remember who it was. My my Alan great great grandparents divorced. She claimed that she was widowed because he had ended up in Springfield State Hospital. And of course I later figured out that to say that you were divorced was a real shame back then, but then I found out that they were buried in separate cemeteries. So it was very clear that they had divorced by then. And then my McCoy great 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 grandparents made divorced because they were fighting over property in 1867 and they're not buried in the same cemetery. I don't know what happened to Papa McCoy. And he's, he's still a mystery. I'm still trying to figure out. And my, my, my mom's maternal grandmother had a great grandmother who was divorced. So, and of course, her, this is my, this is my great 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 grandma Green. My great 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 grandma Green had remarried after her first husband died and then married someone named Daniel Carroll. And then she got divorced from Daniel Carroll in like February or March. 1920, and he had considered himself widowed on the census, and he had then remarried, I guess, or what have you. He had like three separate spouses, and 
she was never really mentioned. And but in the January 1920 census, she had said that she was married, and then he had said he was widowed. I'm going to double check that real quick. But I mean, I'm just seeing all these. So I, you know, and then I've been in two relationships, and I know that for some people, that's a surprise anyway. And I guess one of the things that I vowed is that I'm not getting into a relationship until I'm with the person with whom I'm supposed to be for the rest of my life, whoever it is. Even if I'm never supposed to be with anyone, that's going to happen. What can I do? If I have to wait forever, I'll wait forever. And, okay, so... See if I'm looking here. So her name was Mary Elizabeth Green. No, no, no. That's that's great, great grandma punt. Okay. So I don't have the maiden name for great great grandma punt's mother. And the family tree. Okay, so Daniel J. Carroll. According to the, let's see, according to the 1920 census, it says that, okay, this is, okay, it, he says that he's married, so the census date on this is January 14, 1920. And then we go to I guess I can call her Nana Green just to make things easier. We go to Nana Green's census record, and Nana Green, let's see, her census record is, okay, it says that she's widowed, and this is March, trying to find out the date, March, March 10th, 1920, so they divorced by February, or March of 1920, and he remarried, and he had had some problems like Alzheimer's and some other issues going on. His death certificate specifically reads, his death certificate reads, he had remarried someone named Margaret McNamara, by the way, in case you're related to him. Let's see. So, he was the, he was the widower of Margaret McNamara, and his death certificate says senility and myocardi myocarditis, and then terminal bronchopneumonia. And so, So I've seen the divorce statistics, and I've just seen how things are, and, you know, also the fact that grandma was, excuse me, is in a miserable marriage, and I'm just sitting there going, you know what, I've seen the heartbreak, I've had the heartbreak, that is, I really had to break other people's hearts, although I can tell you that's never easy to break someone's heart, and even when God told me that someone wasn't the one, and I continued to be in that relationship, and I felt the overwhelming guilt until I finally had to break up with that person, and it worked out smoothly to break up with him, although not at first, because breakups are always hard, but I, for the statistics I've seen, for the statistics that I can look back on, although I wasn't necessarily alive for them, for the experience that I've had, I don't want to end up being another statistic in my family, so... I'm just waiting this time. I'm just waiting to get into a relationship with whoever the one may be. If I got to pray and fast on it and do whatever I got to do, I'm going to do that. But like I said, even if I end up single for the rest of my life, so be it.